Slice of Life anime are commonly described as a kind of chicken soup for the soul. That warm blanket around your shoulders on a chilly rainy morning. The best of them remind you of these simple calm moments that we rarely appreciate until they've passed you by. Tizuki Master Takigi-san or Kakaraki Jozu no Takigi-san is one such anime where each episode just brings a feeling of peace and simplicity. Following Nishikata, an oblivious middle school boy, the show chronicles him trying to hatch schemes to tease his classmate Takaki, the teasing master. Really complicated title here, right? It also details their day-to-day -day life, trying to play their elaborate back-and-forth game. Now, Takagi is light years ahead of Nishikata and is teasing him so much because she has an obvious crush on him. Nishikata, on the other hand, doesn't know how to take a hint. I mean, he is a middle school boy in an anime after all, so... What do you gotta do? But the show details how much he thinks of her and grows to spend more time with her. Growth is a key aspect of why I think this show really works for me. Like most slice of life anime, there is no overarching story. There's no tournament to win or apocalypse to avert. There are just kids in a sleepy seaside town going to middle school and the relationship and dynamics that take place there. But each episode you feel like there is some sort of progress towards something. You see their relationship slowly grow from just the classroom to them walking home together or running into each other at the mall. It builds on itself. It progresses. It feels more like life as opposed to other Slice Life anime where each episode kind of feels like it takes place in a bubble that doesn't have anything to do with every other episode. It always feels like you're finding out more of each character as you go, without compromising that chill atmosphere that the show thrives on. No long-winded exposition dumps or overarching plot in sight, just episodic adventures that all flow together into a single whole. You learn about a character from how they act or react to the situations they're put in. You get to see their reaction, you get to feel their character without being told who they are. There's also little breaks in each episode with Mina, Yukari, and Sanai, three middle school girls who go to the same school. This batch of dorks, I think, provide a really nice mix-up to the show's focus, giving it more variation between all the merciless teasing Takagi is about to inflict on Nishikata. Their interactions give a more outside perspective on our leads, while also providing more just outright silly circumstances than what Nishikata would probably get himself into. Set in Tenosho, Japan, a small town on Japan's inland sea, you get a rare example of a show set in the sleepier parts of Japan. There's little public transit or big shopping centers, just a relaxed city by the sea, where everyone it seems walks or bikes to school. Life goes on in places like this at a different pace. It echoes back to my own middle school experience living in a small, mostly quiet town as well. So maybe this is my own nostalgia slipping in here a bit, but this kind of setting feels pitch perfect. Also, I really appreciate the design of these characters. They look and feel like 12 to 13 year old characters, which is sadly not as common in anime as you would hope. One of the real worst things about anime, if I'm being honest, but that topic is a bit too deep to fully dive into in this video. The art style is fairly simplistic and soft, and the animation is pretty standard. But this is a show where flashy, one-punch man, ridiculous animation just wouldn't do the job. These are cogs in the machine that know their role and execute it perfectly to provide an overall experience of a relaxing show focused on two characters and their growth together. Based on a manga by Soichiro Yamamoto, there have been two seasons so far, and in America you can head to Funimation or Verve for season one. But for season two, you'll have to go to Netflix, as this season is an exclusive for the platform. Also, if you're a dub watcher, be prepared, because the cast will switch over in season two. Now, both English dub casts are very well performed, but it's just something to be aware of because it can be a bit jarring for people. Generally, I do like having anime make it to Netflix. It makes it a lot easier to recommend it to people as it remains the most popular streaming service. It would be great for them to have both seasons, but that's just the beast of anime licensing, unfortunately. If you've enjoyed similar anime like Love, Chinibio, and Other Delusions, then I think this is going to be a good fit for you because both shows deal with a kind of cluelessness that comes with this sort of age, and the characters themselves growing up and growing together. Both are firmly slice of life, so again, no major plot to get lost in, just episodic and cute adventures to chill out to. Hell, I'll even toss in the melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya as a similar anime. Now, this isn't one I like to bring up a lot, since I feel like a lot of slice of life anime get contrasted against it a lot. It's the big one, it's a milestone anime for a lot of people in the West. But the dynamic between Nishikata and Takagi does remind me a lot of Kion and Haruhi. Takagi is more clever while Haruhi is more of a 
blunt force object, but the feeling is still there, it's still the same. They have this kind of playfulness and back and forth between each other that just, that just works. It just works really well. The world outside right now is tense, to say the least. And sometimes you just need that show that you can sit down and cuddle up to. For me, for right now, teasing Master Takagi-san is that anime to make you remember simpler days and give yourself a much needed break from the world outside. It's a show that is lovable and enduring to the end and is absolutely an anime you should watch.